after this person, I don't even remember her name. It was, um, she was in charge of international sales. Stephanie Bonnet. Stephanie Bonnet. Stephanie Bonnet. Stephanie yeah. Bonnet. Oh. I think, maybe. Yep. She yep. hated me after that. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, the job was for assistant to basically Tim and Paul, an executive assistant. I was like, I'll do anything. Okay, I'm game. And uh, when I interviewed with Tim and Paul, it was just so funny and so, you know, I had never interviewed anywhere, ever. This is my first real job interview. Yeah, I think and our I, interviews were kind of weird. <laughs> they were awesome. They were perfect for me. Um, so then they were like, so you speak German? I was like, yeah, I think I can speak German. So they said, okay. So they called somebody in Germany right then and there and made me talk to him. <laughs> and then they were, they were asking, so can she speak German? Is she like good? And he goes, yeah, she's, she's good, I guess. And I was like, <laughs> so I, and then the next thing was that I met um, the software and hardware team. And I'll never forget Robert, smartass that he is, was like, how do you spell insubrevious? Whoa. So I'm like, you know, that's not a word. Even though it's not a word, I spell it perfectly. But is it star? Is it Star Trek or Star Trek? Yeah. <laughs> and thank God my dad and my older brother watch Star Trek. So <laughs> Star Trek, and that goes down a whole other avenue for me. Um, yeah. so I got that right too. And then the whole thing was just so crazy. And then I had to travel a half an hour to get to this job. And they were like, okay, well, you are working for us. You're not working for anyone else. They basically hired me to show up at 6.30 in the morning while, while they were all sleeping to make sure everybody else was doing their job. So automatically, everybody started hating me. And they basically said, well, you know, you work for us. You don't, you're not here to make friends. I do. <laughs> and everybody hated my guts. I remember that. But I tell, you, I tell you what it taught me. It taught me to just cut through the BS and really get down to it. And so, you know, at this at this point, Tim was meeting all kinds of interesting people, which he continues to do to this day. Because Tim, if you guys haven't all figured it out yet. Um, he is the closest in our lifetime to a Leonardo da Vinci that you're going to find. Right. And I, I really mean that. I, I don't say that lightly. I, I just want you to know that in the time that I've known Tim, he's always working on something and it's never half-assed. You know, you, you'd walk down to his lair and, and he had many lairs just FYI, not only in the old folks' home, but also <laughs> in various spots. And I had access to them all. That's how I learned the speak of the video toaster. I never got trained on it. I just had access to all the software and hardware programmers, well, the hardware guys and the software programmers. And Tim was amazing. I, I just got to say, just like his dad was really cool, and answering all his questions, Tim always did that for me. I had zero zilch computer experience. You got to remember, at that time, I mean, the Amiga was there, which was super cool. It was like being from the future, it had true video timing. But there was really, you know, the PC, it was always this infighting between Apple and Bill Gates was being a jerk. I just remember hearing things about it. But I never really understood all of it. And I just got to say, you know, here we create a device that I ended up demoing that was a live demonstration, which at that time nobody was doing live demonstrations of anything, whether it's on the computer or in the video realm. You got to remember that in the video department at that time, it was all super high end, you know. Mm -hmm. Anal chief engineers. Yes, that's what we used to call them, anal chief engineers. <laughs> and it was literally, you know, the million dollar suite. So there were all these dudes dressed in their, you know, gazillion dollar outfits that just maneuvered around and you were like supposed to be ingratiated to them. And I was like, F that. <laughs> 
You know? And so, she literally said. I literally did at <laughs> any point. Because you got to remember, I am probably 28 at this time. It's my first real job. <laughs> and I am like a young girl, and I'm like, I'm not going to dress like a dude. I'm not, you know, I'm just getting into being a girl, being away from my parents. And so, hence, I just kind of said, I'm going to be a woman, I'm going to dress like a woman, I'm sexual like a woman, and you can take it or you can leave it. <laughs> I remember before one of the shows, you came up to Paul and me and said, what's my limits here? What, what can I not say? Yeah, because I, I, the, so the first trade show was in Cologne at the, um, the at, yeah at the Amy Expo there, and it was all Lightwave and Video Toaster, and that's the first time when they were like, oh yeah, just say some stuff, Keith, and I was like, uh, okay. And so I just looked at the interface, and I basically used our amazing interface to just go through what it was. Let's and, try this one. Yeah. She was trying it. Yeah, and, and it was just easy, and I knew enough because, you know, I knew, because again, this is going back to the fact that I was the executive assistant, I had access to all the programmers and hardware engineers where no one else was allowed to go in. So I became friends with everybody and I'm like, hey, what are you working on? Oh, I'm doing the switcher scroll, you know, or hey, I'm doing the CG, or hey, you know, Charles is working on some hardware stuff. Um, and so that, you know, and then I would just come to Tim and I'd say, what the fuck does that mean? What is this? What is that? And the, the coolest part about, I'm just jumping forward a little bit, and we'll get back to Kiki effects, I haven't forgotten that, <laughs> is just trade shows. So the weird thing about trade shows at that point, there was computer shows, and then there were broadcast video shows. There was no videography. There, there were no camcorder-driven shows. All that happened because of what happened with the video toaster. And so, you know, yeah, all we of a sudden, count on one hand the number of computers on the show floor that night. Yeah, and so, you know, I'd be dying, and I'd be like, "What do you mean, Genlock?" And he would, Tim would draw me diagrams of how the switcher would work to explain to me what Genlock meant in the computer realm and what Genlock meant in the video realm. And so I was just learning on the fly. Again, I come from being a, um, a dental assistant and a recent college grad and having zero technology experience at all. And in many ways it was probably great because I was just a freshie. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he can mold my mind. <laughs> yeah, I was a sponge. But he was fantastic. I, I just got to say that Tim never, ever made me feel stupid for asking any questions. He always thoroughly explained things to me, which I was deeply grateful for. And not trying to sound like a jerk, but you know, Back in the 90s, there were no women, and very few women. How many programmers? Zero. Right. <laughs> I mean, there were very few women, and the women that were at trade shows, you know, were hired for TNA, and, um, you know, and just speaking boxes where they would hear something recorded and they would be reading the script or they'd be using an ear prompter. Yeah. Playing the tape. Yeah. And so for me, I I I mean without trying to sound cliche, I was from Kansas and my parents were European. I all I did was just go through school so I could just get out and get to the world and do something. And here was my chance. It was this crazy world that I walked into and I didn't understand how it worked. And so I guess I'm kind of grateful for that because Tim and Paul were just so cool and just saying, you don't have to take anybody's crap. And so I will never forget the first NAD, which is in 1990. And 
Nobody told me that I was going to demonstrate the video toaster, that picture he showed of you with the swing set. And the thing he also didn't tell you about was the swing set was revolutionary because having a booth at a trade show costs an exorbitant amount of money. You, you normally went through the rigmarole of boring crap and setting it up and all of this stuff. And, you, you know. You hired a company to design it. Yeah. And then they arranged with And the it would be business. horrible and boring because back in the day it was. And so, because we were bootstrapped, as Tim was saying, you know, we literally bootstrap. We were like, how can we do it on the cheap? How can we send it cheap? How can it, how can everything be how light? How can we assemble it without the union? The yeah. Union yeah. And so, exactly. That was it. That was the thing. So it's all those little things of how we got around things, of how we evolved and how that, we... That was a proscenium in the middle of the trade show. It was a stage. Yeah. And that really wasn't done. And nobody did that. Yeah. And the it, fire marshal would always come and, you know, that happened at counter shows too, uh, where the crowds would be so big. The fire marshal, you remember any of that? Oh yes, the fire marshal tried to get rid of everybody. Or either that, you'd go to a, a, an Amy Expo in New York and want to break your legs if you touched anything for right. real. Did you just unplug that? Yeah, I mean it was <laughs> That's an it, it was that kind of thing. So we were, you know, we did everything in house, and that was something that I think also set us apart, and that's also. Um, where Paul Montgomery was really genius. He always really thought outside of the box about many things. And I would say Paul really could meet someone and just know what their talent was. Like, you're this, you're this, you're this, you're this. And he was always kind of... He told me I was a vacuum cleaner. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... We had this amazing amalgam of people from yes. no experience to some experience to just learning it on the job. And I, I always have said that I'm either going to sink or I'm going to swim, and that's what carried me. That's always what's carried I'm so me through. So glad you didn't. <laughs> I know you too, right? So it was very exciting, but it was also terrifying. And from my point of view, I'm just going to say, being a woman. Nobody believed anything I said, and so <laughs> here we are, right? And and it made me, you know. And then on top of that, we're a device that is coming in to kill the era of dinosaurs because that's what we were, because we were the first amalgamation of computer and broadcast video together. I can remember when we did so many TV shows. So it was the I was really lucky. I got to travel a lot with Tim and Paul, and we would go to high-end events, of, like for press and different things. And you know, I would usually demo, and then they would do the interview. Um, and it was always amazing to me when we'd go to these high-end broadcast places, and they'd be like, "Where do we plug in the video?" And then the, I could tell they were giving him total crap of like. Hmm. Oh, oh yeah, well the Computer Chronicles, I yes. told you that story. Yeah. Uh, Paul and I were on Computer Chronicles in San Francisco, and I, would, I went up to the producer and I said, you know, if you want, you can just take and plug the toaster into your switcher and, you know, and punch it up. He said, well, computers have different frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it's not compatible uh, with our equipment here. Mm. And I said, well, it does meet the artist 178 spec. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the monkey speaks. Uh, and it was often like that. I mean, we would have to decompress all of us in our own ways of just like, because <gasps> everything was against us. And I, I just want to remind you guys just how far we've come because technology just keeps getting faster and faster and faster and faster all the time. I mean, here we are with our cell phones, with HD, video, ability to record it and stream it and do all kinds of things with it. Um, and I just want you to know that back early on, Tim was like, someday, video is all going to be software. He did yeah, say I that. I remember that in a meeting. I said, look guys, you know, we're getting to 
to the point where Pentiums are going to be up to 75 megahertz. In a whole in serious. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Moore's Law. <laughs> So, so what, how, what, what about so Kiki effects? So Kiki effects. So to just bring it back around, I just the only thing I want to say about my first trade show ever was that it was really hard because nobody wanted us to succeed, and and that's also within the name, the video toaster. Uh, what I remember of us choosing the toaster is that we wanted it to stand out and got it. It got us great press, you know? And then the fact that it actually did do something phenomenal, which caused a buzz and then a stir, just built upon itself, and that was phenomenal. So, um, we would all spend a lot of time together, just like you guys do. And you'd get excited about certain things, you'd want to try out different things, and, you know, we were all nerds. We had no life in Topeka. There was nothing to do there. For we, we, we had an Easter egg in Lightwave. <laughs> push, push a keyboard combination that would tell you which Topeka restaurant you're supposed to go to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, oh my god, because there weren't that many good no. ones. No. But anyway, um, so we had a 16 foot pro projector screen and um, Tim had a really cool um, projector Barco. that was really high end, a barcode projector, and we watched Laserdisc back in the day, if you can remember that. Mm. And, you know, you guys, and even though I was in my 20s, I was really young, I was very inexperienced, you know, I didn't go anywhere, all I did was go through school, work, 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 and then I got a job. And so, for me, I was really into Madonna back in the day, uh -huh. and I loved my favorite movies were James Bond movies since I was uh -huh. a little kid. So here we have this big projector, you know, we're all hanging out till 10, 11 at night. We, where, where are we going? What are we doing? Nothing. So I would, I would do silhouette dancing, and I'd mess around with it, and then uh, Peter Tjertsma basically said, God, I think we could do something with that. And I was like, oh yeah, let's let's do something. And they're like, we could make effects. So at that time, it, like right it, behind you. It, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. This is exactly how it happened. If I uh, yeah, I 